So Cadwallader, the last king of the Britons. Well, so Geoffrey of Monmouth tells us. But there is a historical side to this king, as well as the mythological side. And today we will look at both. Now, Cadwallader was the son of Cadwallon, and Cadwallon was the High King of Britain, who was much renowned for his success in battles against the Angle and Saxon invaders from the West. But during one of these battles, the Battle of Heavenfield, Cadwallon lost his life while he was fighting against Oswald of Northumbria. So this caused a little bit of a dilemma for the kingship of Britain. Because, you see, Cadwallader, the rightful heir to the throne, was only a young boy. Now there were those that thought Cadwallader to be much too young to take up the responsibilities of High King of Britain and there was one in particular that thought well I should take the throne for myself and so the throne was seized by another Cad, Cad Vale and why are there so many Cads you might be asking we have Cad Wallotten, we have Cad Wallader and now we have Cad Vale well the word Cad is derived from the Brythonic word for battle and so we have many of the ancient kings being called Cad and so we had Cadwallader which meant battle leader and we've got Cadvale which means decliner of battle and we'll get to that soon now with Cadvale having seized the throne Cadwallader's life was in danger. Cadvale didn't want this heir apparent hanging around. To him, Cadwallader was just a threat. So Cadwallader was smuggled out of the country and they took him across the channel to reside in exile in the land that we now know as Brittany. Now, we're not too sure exactly what happened to Cadvale. That's all we know is what we're told by Nennius, and he tells us that Cadvale was a disgrace, and there are stories that tell us that Cadvale actually left his allies and deserted them in battle. Hence the name Battle Decliner. We do know, however, that Cadwallader returned from Brittany to reclaim his throne in 655. And as High King of Britain, he continued his fight against the Angles and Saxons, and he was the first king to fight under the banner of the Red Dragon. So clearly, Cadwallader saw himself as being the one who would fulfill the prophecy as told by Merlin de Vortigan. And if you want to know more about that one, then I'll put a link up there. Now, during Cadwallader's reign, there were two great plagues that hit Britain. One in 664 and the other in 682. So this is where the whole thing gets a little bit misty. Because there are some that tell us that Cadwallader died in the first plague in 664. But then we have an entry 
in the annals Cambriae that tell us that the plague hit Britain in 682 and that Cadwallader was one of its victims. Now, Geoffrey of Monmouth has a completely different take on things. And, as we'll see later, that along with some poems from the Book of Taliesin, we'll see that Cadwallader was seen as a messianic figure, a saviour of Britain. Now, Geoffrey of Monmouth tells us that Cadwallader was actually the last king of the Britons, and during his reign there was a great plague, and Cadwallader led the people of Britain across the Channel to settle on the shores of Brittany. And he tells us that the country was left depopulated other than a few Saxon settlers and it remained depopulated for a total of 11 years. Now, while Cadwallader and the rest of the Britons were away enjoying the sunny climes of Brittany, the Saxons decided they would take advantage of the situation. And when the plague had abated, they invited more of their friends and family across from the continent to come and settle in these green and pleasant lands. But Cadwallader had never given up Britain, and once news had reached him that the plague had abated, he gathered an army and came back across the channel to reclaim his lands. Now it is said that soon after returning, Cadwallader had a prophecy. And in this prophecy, it is said that if Cadwallader would renounce his throne, he would become a saint. And the control of Britain would be returned back to the original Britons. Geoffrey then tells us he did just exactly that. He renounced his throne and he went on a pilgrimage to Rome and he was baptised by the Pope. So in 689, Cadwallader dies a pious man having sacrificed himself to return the country of Britain back to the control of his people. Now, the problem with Geoffrey is that, well, he didn't always stick to the facts. And, well, quite clearly, some of the things he tells us we know today were just historically not true but we do have another source that talks about Cadwallader and that is the book of Taliesin and in the book of Taliesin there are a couple of poems that relate to Cadwallader and one of these poems is called The Great Prophecy of Britain and I'll read a little bit of that for you now. Cadwallader is a spear at the side of his men. In the forest, in the field, in the vale, on the hill. Cadwallader is a candle in the darkness walking with us. Gloriously he will come and the Welsh will rise. And the second poem is the prophecy of Cadwallader and we are told that Cadwallader sleeps in the mountains and at the time of his country's greatest needs Cadwallader will once again return. Now some of that might sound a little familiar to some of you 
Now, the person that we know of that waits and sleeps in the mountains, waiting for his country's greatest need, is Arthur. So, we must ask the obvious question then. Was Cadwallader the inspiration for the Arthur that we know today that was brought to us in the Mabinogi and in Geoffrey of Monmouth's tales? There's no doubt that he was seen as a messiah, a person that sacrificed himself for his people and his country, and one who will be there to save it again in its greatest need. There are certainly a lot of similarities. So with that question, I'll leave you to sit and ponder. And if you've liked today's episode, then give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again on the next one very soon.